If you encounter a lich in its lair, that's a challenge rating of 22. Ancient Red Dragons, CR 24. The iconic Tarrasque, 30. But I think we can all agree that nothing kills a D&D party more effectively than scheduling does. Horribly, nay, cruelly, most of us cannot prioritize D&D over everything else in our lives. And with a group of half a dozen people, all of whom have a job or school or a family or all of the above, the chance of any given session running into a scheduling conflict is high. Speaking of scheduling, my 2023 calendar is on sale right now, it's very pretty, and the deluxe edition comes with dice! Anyway, that's why so many D&D groups find themselves playing sessions with a party member missing, and I don't blame them. Having a session anyway, even if one one player can't make it can keep a game on track and help prevent long stretches between games. And while there are definitely sessions that everybody needs to be present for, there are also sessions where all you do is talk to NPCs or run errands or make a complicated plan that you will later abandon in favor of sheer unbridled chaos. Of course, the DM or another player can fill in for the missing person, or you can just hand wave it. We all know that we're playing a game, so it's not strictly necessary to come up with an in-game reason for why Clarnax the Destroyer isn't here when you all know that it's because Dave's daughter has a marching band competition. But sometimes an explanation can be fun, and it can even contribute to character growth or world building. So today I bring you six ways to explain a temporarily missing player character. They got arrested. Maybe it happened overnight while the rest of the party was sleeping. Maybe good old Clarnax the Destroyer stepped out for a smoke break or a coffee run and didn't come back. However it happened, at the beginning of the session, they used their one phone call, I mean, sending, to let the party know that their crimes have finally caught up to them. But nobody needs to worry because they have a plan. The party should definitely carry on with their day as usual. No need to orchestrate some kind of prison break, unless you think that you can make it last for the whole session. If the missing player is game to spend a few minutes helping you set it up, they can even record a voice memo that you can use for their sending. Hey, it's Clarnax. In jail, but don't worry, I'm handling it. Go ahead to the temple like we planned, I'll catch up with you tomorrow. What their crime was and how it is resolved is up to you and the player. Perhaps they were arrested accidentally and it takes them the length of the session to convince their captors that it's all just a big misunderstanding. Or maybe they have to wait for nightfall and then they break out. Or a beloved NPC posts bail for them or uses their influence to get them freed. It might be fun to have a wild story to recount when the party is reunited for the next session. If you really want to weave some threads here, the missing player could have learned some plot-relevant information from a fellow prisoner, or even formed a connection with a cellmate that could later benefit the party. Somebody screwed up a spell. Magic can be so unpredictable sometimes. Your caster was practicing a new spell last night after everybody else went to sleep and something went wrong. Depending on which player is missing, this arcane mishap might have struck another party member or the caster themselves, but the outcome conveniently makes one character out of commission for the duration of this session. They were temporarily temporarily transported to a pocket dimension full of harmless ooze, or a highly developed civilization of tiny frog people, and it can be reversed, but not until the next day when that particular spell slot is replenished. Or they got transformed into a little green marble. It's just a magic glitch, you gotta stick them in your pocket and wait for it to wear off. Or somehow they were transported forward in time, 24 hours. No harm done, but they're already there in the future, and all you can do is let the time pass and eventually catch up. If you want to bring this little gag full circle, it might be fun to say that this experience allowed the caster to develop some original magic, and next session, with this little accident behind them, you can award them with access to a new spell with a related effect. Hashtag not sponsored, but I like third-party supplements for this because then you can hand them a spell from a book like Cobalt Press's Deep Magic, and it will genuinely feel like their character invented a new spell that has never existed before in your world, which is pretty cool. Hey, I want to talk to you about this Kickstarter. No, absolutely not. I'm out of Kickstarter money. Go away. But it's just one dollar. Yeah, yeah. Lots of Kickstarters have a one dollar tier, but you're just like reserving a spot so you can spend a bunch of money later. No, it's just one dollar. It's called one dollar one shot. You pay one dollar, you get a one shot adventure. That's the whole deal. If it's just one dollar, it can't be that good. No, it's a solid one shot. It's called The Case of Norntolk. It's for a party of three to five level six players. You investigate some missing people. It's got NPCs, original art, a new monster. It even comes with a map. But what am I gonna do? Pledge one dollar and then wait a year and a half for a one-shot? Kickstarters always take forever. Not this one. They're delivering the PDF the day after the Kickstarter ends. Well, is that the best use of my dollar? For one dollar, I could also get one donut, probably. 
Oh, I forgot to mention all backers get a second one shot for free. So technically it's two 50 cent one shots, but that's a lot less catchy sounding. Is this some kind of trap? It sounds like a really great deal. Are you sure you don't also want my soul or my firstborn child or something? I mean, are you offering? They're splitting the party. This one could even work with multiple players missing. Think of something that the party needs to get done, but that isn't necessarily dangerous. Maybe an NPC needs to be escorted somewhere or picked up and brought back with you. Maybe there's a physical item that you need to go fetch, or you have to scout a location or get something repaired. Well, the missing player is off doing that. A lot of the reasons we avoid splitting the party during D&D are mostly about what kinds of gameplay are fun. In real life, a group of six people would never run two different errands in sequence one at a time when they could just split up. But in D&D we often do that because it's no fun and certainly no more efficient for half the party to sit back and check Twitter while a few people roleplay a trip to the store. But when a player is missing, there's no gameplay downside to splitting the party and having them do simultaneous tasks. If you plan on there being combat, you can scale it to match the depleted party and you're pretty much all set. Then, next session, you can have the player who was missing roll a check or two to see how successful their errand was. This Way, the missing player still gets to contribute something and move the game forward. Plus, if there are any boring but necessary tasks on your party's to-do list, this is a nice easy way to get it done with a convenient hand wave. They were summoned. Somebody super important really needed them for something, so they used powerful magic to summon your missing party member straight to them. For a cleric, paladin, or particularly devout character of any class, their god might need them to carry a message, enact a portent, or deliver a prophecy. For a warlock, their patron has as an errand for them to run, and they may never even learn what purpose it served. A wizard might be summoned by the powerful magic being who trained them to assist in a difficult ritual. Or if there's no good reason for any of that to happen, it could just be a mistake. Oops, sorry, that archdevil has a warlock servant with a very similar name. Are you sure you're not interested in making a pact? Oh, your character doesn't worship this god? Must have been a clerical error. <laughs> Whatever the reason, they are returned in one piece via the same powerful teleportation magic as soon as the missing player is back at your table. They're hungover. Listen, it happens to the best of us. They overdid it on the mead last night and they need to spend the whole day at the inn alternately lying down with a cool cloth over their eyes and kneeling over the chamber pot. No, no, don't stay back with them. They're not in danger. They just feel disgusting and they don't want anybody to witness it or make any loud noises. No. Don't do it. You are about to make some sort of excuse for why your D&D character cannot, in fact, be hungover. They have poison immunity, there are healing spells, they could just cast lesser restoration, I get it. But it was magic mead, special turtle made swamp mead that their fragile humanoid digestive system was unprepared for. I don't know, man, it's fantasy. This is one of those moments where you gotta ask yourself, do the mechanics serve the game? And if they don't, then just let them go. A hangover is a great excuse for a missing party member. They would be completely useless in this state, so they're out for the day, but you know they'll be perfectly back to normal tomorrow, and there's no question of malicious intent or foul play. It's just a hangover. If the character isn't the drinker, food poison can do basically the same thing. Yikes, that stew must have been a little off last night. Nobody have the stew at this tavern from now on, okay? They have jury duty. Whatever civilization they're from, they require that criminals be tried by a jury of their peers, and it just so happens to be the missing PC's turn to fill their role as a juror. They receive a summons and are immediately brought home through teleportation services provided by the government free of charge, of course. They won't be able to join you for today's session because they have to sit for the trial. Yeah, it's a pain, but everyone from this civilization has to do it at least a few times in their life, and trust me, you don't want to ignore that summons. Haven't you heard the stories? Ugh. This is also an easy, if silly, way to excuse multiple absences in a row. After all, some trials take a really long time. Once they're back, you might want to let the missing player come up with the subject and outcome of the trial, if they want to. That can make for a fun roleplay moment at the beginning of the next session back. Of course, we can't end this video without a big disclaimer. Whatever you do with a player's character while they are not present, you should absolutely discuss it with them first. In fact, you should communicate with the entire party before the campaign even begins to make sure that you're all on the same page about how scheduling conflicts and absences are handled. Many groups would prefer to just not meet if everyone can't be there. And remember, it takes a lot of trust to let someone else make decisions for your character. Not everyone is going to be okay with it. There are some real horror 
stories out there about bad behavior from DMs or even other players while a party member is absent. Don't be that kind of asshole. We're real people with real lives, and as much as we might want to, we can't prioritize D&D all the time. I don't think it's good to punish players for absences. I mean, missing out on D&D is punishment enough. And again, you don't have to have an in-game explanation for why someone is missing. Sometimes it's better and easier to just not let a real-world inconvenience become an in-game inconvenience. But other times, it can just be funny. Here are a few that didn't make the list. You forgot them. Wait, where's Clarnax? Did nobody check to make sure he got in the wagon? God damn it, is he still back at the tavern? The curse of incorporeality. What, you didn't hear them yelling? They followed you guys around all day. Ah shit, the wizard forgot her spell book. She thinks she left it next to the bathtub at the last inn. She's got a double back for it. And don't forget to order your copy of my 2023 calendar. It's enchanted to make scheduling D&D easier. Okay, that's a lie, but wouldn't that be cool?